All right, let's bring in our guest. You know, he caught the final out of the 1969 World Series, earning himself a place in Mets history forever. And on August 2nd, you could read all about it in his book, Coming Home, My Amazing Life with the New York Mets. And trust me, it is amazing. Cleon Jones, thanks for being here, Cleon. Well, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you guys for thanking of me. I, I do uh, want to ask you, I have a lot of things to ask you, and I read this book. I just talked talked to you off air, and I said a lot of times I, I tell people I read their book, I lie. I read like three chapters. <laughs> I read the whole thing. I was up until like 1.30 in the morning, and I loved every bit of it. But I do have to ask you right off the bat, where is the ball? The final out of the 69 World Series, I, I'm i almost sure you don't have it. I worry you were like um, mugged by some uh, hippie from Astoria on your way to the dugout there. When you caught well, the uh, game-winning ball, absolutely right. I, I don't have it, uh, but I wasn't mugged. Uh, it, like a good teammate, I I gave the ball to Jerry Kuzma. Okay. And, uh, now what he did with it, I, I don't know, but uh, it was just uh, exciting time, and uh, all of us uh, we like winning and we like giving back. Yeah, I and had, of course. I had to think that. That was Davey Johnson who um, hit the, the final out to you, went on to manage the Mets, the 1986 uh, championship. Um, I don't know if you could see. I have a piece of the Shea Stadium wall in the background. I paid for the wall, Clea, right, right there. You were right there. Well, right yeah, I, saw that, uh, I saw that 333, I think, uh, 338. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I thought you were posting my bad names, but you were, little, <laughs> you were two points show. <laughs> By the way, you hit 340 famously right. in 69, and it didn't right. earn you the batting title. That must have just, forget it. Nowadays, you, you you have it by 15 points, but did that drive you nuts that you were that close? Who won it that year? Did Rose well, win it at 348? Uh, uh, Pete, Pete Rose won it. Yeah. Pete Rose and uh, Clemente, uh, second. They, uh, uh, they worked hard up until the last day. I think Rose must have gone three for four last day. Yeah. Win it. yeah. I think that, our games were canceled. Uh, so, but it, it was a great season. Uh, I, I'm just happy to be mentioned uh, with Pete Rose and uh, Roberto Clemente. And uh, uh, 69, uh, we, we'll talk about that forever. Uh, sweet Gail Hodges and what he did. Yeah. And all of my great teammates, Tom Seaver and the rest of them. I want to get into that. That's great company you were in there, right there up until the last day of the season. Yes, that's interesting. You point out in the book that you clinched the the, the division um, in the first game of the doubleheader. And they're like, yeah, we don't have to play the second game, except that it might have, yeah, you were eight points behind Rose, so it probably didn't, unless you had gone well, like six for six. I but eight points behind at, at that particular time. Not coming I think in, they, yeah. they played Atlanta. I think he went three for four or four for four. Yeah. Uh, but we were in Chicago, I think. No, no, where, where were we? But I know the, the, the game was rained out. But, uh, oh, I see. No. It was rained out. I thought they just yeah, decided yeah. not to play it because it didn't matter. I mean, which uh interesting. Uh, but let me, let me, so, uh, I mean, what was it like back then? You, you know, nowadays the stats instantly show up on your phone. How much were you aware of how close it was? Did you find out, was it t not till the next day that you found out that you lost the batting title to Rose? I'm interested in that kind of stuff. No, no, I, I found out uh, the same day. Uh, 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 like I tell everybody, uh, mm -hmm. Rose was an exciting player, so it was Clemente. And, right. and uh, to lose those two guys uh, uh, it doesn't really feel the, feel the ruffling in my feather, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, what, the way I look at it, uh, about midseason, I had a, a little accident where I cracked two ribs. Mm -hmm. uh, had, had it not been for that, I, I would have won and gone away. Uh, and I say that because you know, I was calling my own shots, I, you know, three for four and two for four and two mm -hmm. for two and those kind of things. And uh, I, I was just hitting the ball as hard as I wanted to. Uh, I had that layoff when I came back. It, it took a while for me to get it back together. Well, let me ask you, I mean, you guys, you were part of that. Uh, you weren't part of the pitching staff, but you were on the team with the pitching staff. I and mean, it was loaded. Nolan Ryan um, made his only World Series appearances on that 69 team. Uh, obviously Tom Seaver, Jerry Kuzman, who you gave the ball to Gary Gentry, Don Cardwell. This, this was, it was stacked. Put me in the batter's box. What's it like facing a guy like Bob Gibson? And uh, are there others that, um, was Gibson the toughest you faced or were there others like, uh, Marichelle? There were so many greats, uh, back then when you were No, playing. no doubt. There were so many greats, uh, during that time. Uh, I was just happy 
didn't have to pay Siva and Kuzma mm -hmm. and, and, and Ryan. But then right. uh, when you when you when you talk about the two greatest to ever uh, pitch, uh, which was uh, Sandy Kovacs, uh, uh, Bob Gibson, uh, mm -hmm. th those are the two greatest in, 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 in my career. But, but again, uh, the staff we had with uh, Siva, uh, Kuzman, Ryan, Gentry, uh, and, and so many other guys uh, took up the slack. Uh, Don Caldwell, you mentioned him. Right. Uh, uh, Ron Taylor, I mean, Gil just put together a great, uh, a great staff, and uh, it, it proved to be a great staff th throughout the year. Uh, suddenly, mm -hmm. uh, we were we were in almost every ball game except when we played Houston. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they seemed to know what was coming uh, when we <laughs> played them. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, we 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 were pretty good uh, as a team because, again, I keep missing the Gil Hodge because it made a difference. I know you love Gil. I mean, uh, the the book is like a tribute to Gil Hodges and right there. And at that 69 team, there was so much, um, you know, the black cat comes out there against the Cubs to uh, just yeah. the, all, all of August and September was fighting the Cubs, right? You were behind and neck and neck with the Cubs and the black cat. First of all, where did that black cat come from? That is a, the, the black cat mysteriously appears at Shea and all of a sudden the Mets pull within a half a game of the Cubs and kind of didn't look back from there. Where did you, you mentioned not having seen a black cat before that in the stadium. <laughs> what are your thoughts now? Well, some, uh, 50 had, years uh, later, 55. Cat, yeah. uh, had, had I seen any cat at Shea Stadium uh, <laughs> prior to that game? So right. I don't, uh, Leo DeRoche has created a lot of scenarios that <laughs> we, can't, we can't explain. Mm -hmm. uh, the, whoever brought that cat to the stadium, uh, man, it, it was a great idea. Because uh, it brought all kind of enthusiasm to the stadium, and, and it made for a fun night for all of us. Uh, yeah. Simply because uh, it was Leo LaRoche. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That really rubs yeah. it in. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, it's it's it, it's uh, sad in a way. I hope the the book uh, brings shed some light on this. Like you were three forty hitter that year, and a great hitter in your whole career. But I feel like you're remembered for making the last out, which is great, recording the last out in left field, mm -hmm. and uh, the shoe polish incident. Do you want to uh, talk about that? Well, uh, the shoe, shoe polish incident happened. Uh, Clint Denham was in the arm deck circle. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> uh, what I was hitting, uh, I, I knew the ball hit me, uh -huh. but uh, the umpire wasn't saying anything. Clint Denham was yelling, the ball hit him, the ball hit him. And uh, I wanted to hit. I wasn't thinking about walking. And and uh, suddenly, uh, Gil walked out of the dugout uh, with the ball with uh, shoe polish uh, on the ball. Now, there's been a lot of stories going around that somebody rubbed shoe polish on the ball. And mm -hmm. one, of, one of the good things that happened during that time, we had uh, great club, clubhouse people who, who, who shine and polish their shoes each and every day. Yeah, uh, Nick Torman and, and people like that. So, uh, again, I knew the ball hit me, uh, but I wasn't thinking about walking because he didn't direct me to first base. Yeah. And then on the one was jumping up and down, and that showed you uh, what kind of a player he was. He, he <laughs> wanted me to get on base so he could get up to the plate, and we all know what happened after that. He hit a two-run home. So, yeah. Uh, uh, put us back in the ball game. MVP uh, of the World Series, right? right. Yeah, MVP and, and uh, uh, one of the team leaders. He 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 uh, he's one of the guys that uh, helped put us over the top. You know, I, I so I have two questions with that. First of all, what the hell's wrong with the umpire? I mean, uh, the ball hits you and kicks into the dugout. What? What? How did he think? What? What did he think happened to that ball? Why do we have to even mention the shoe polish here? Of, of course, well, he hit you. How would it take such a crazy angle and bounce? Yeah, well, that that, that that's. That's what I've, I've always said. Mm -hmm. uh, people said, uh, well, somebody could have rubbed uh, shoe polish in, 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 in the uh, dugout. Well, how did the ball get in the dugout? It had yeah. to get something to ricochet uh, to the dugout. It, it had, had it uh, not hit me or the, the umpire or the catcher, uh, how did it get in the dugout? So the ball got to me first. It hit right. me, ricocheted into, uh, into the dugout. But you know, that's what games are about. People have opinions, and, and uh, they're going to draw their own uh, opinion about what happened. 
and yeah. we'll him. You know, you mentioned the clubhouse guys who uh, routinely would shine your shoes before the games. Did they get a World Series ring? But it's because it seems like they should have. That was a pivotal moment in the in the series. Well, of course they got a World Series ring. They got All a right. World Series share. Good, uh, good, so good. We were the good guys. We gave <laughs> everybody a share. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I was looking at it, uh, you know, and I knew all this, but it, I, I put it to your book, put it together. You guys went through some all time great teams, not only in the 69 season, but to get to the 73 World Series, which you bowed out to the A's and seven. But mm -hmm. all right. So that 69, you, you had to get by the Cubs. They were good. Those 69 Braves, you had Hank Aaron, uh, Orlando mm -hmm. Cepeda, Necro and Perry. Um, mm -hmm. If it wasn't them, it would have been the Giants who maybe name recognition wise were even stronger. Right. With mm -hmm. McCovey and, and Mays and Marichal and and uh, all those guys. And then you beat the mm -hmm. Orioles, who should have been a dynasty with uh, Cuellar and, and uh, Jim Palmer and Brooks Robinson and Boog Powell and all those guys. And then the big red machine you beat in 73 and four, seven games on the A's. Another great team. It must have been like 25 Hall of Famers in all those teams I mentioned that you had to get through. No, no, no doubt about it. You're talking about four teams uh, who had great offense, great mm -hmm. offense, uh, and, and and weren't too bad on defense. Uh, the plays, uh, they could hit with anybody. But again, when, when you talk about baseball, you got just a complete, mm -hmm. complete package, pitching and hitting. Uh, we, we had an advantage because uh, we had great pitching and we played great defense. Uh, we got in the slugging patch with right. either one of these teams, we probably would have been on the losing side. But but we, we uh, thank thank God to mm -hmm. the pitching staff, we stayed close in almost every game. So that gave us a chance to win. And you know, in baseball, if you don't if you don't beat yourself, yeah, it's kind of difficult for the for the other team to beat you. That's that was Bill Hodges' uh, motto: Let's not beat ourselves. And, and suddenly, uh, during uh, the stretch with the Braves, uh, we knew that we could fight. Uh, we, we beat uh, Atlanta mm -hmm. in three. We suddenly didn't beat Hank Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> he had a great series uh, against us. And and, and then uh, uh, even, even uh, Baltimore, which uh, didn't hit well, they didn't hit, they didn't hit as well because of our pitching staff. So uh, when you put together a great unit, uh, it, it starts with, with pitching. And then uh, you, you got to have uh, mm -hmm. uh, defense. Nobody was better than A.G. in center field and, and Buddy and, and shortstop. And, uh, catching, nobody was better right. than Jerry Grody and defensively. So right. we were strong up the middle. And uh, what people don't realize uh, is that we, we want to mm -hmm. have four starters. We uh, platoon everybody up. Uh, A.G. was a starter. Uh, Cody was a starter. Harrison was a starter. And I was the other starter. Everybody else was right. And uh, that, that shows the, the, the magic of Gail Hodges, uh, how, how he put this together. And made it work. He had uh, the winning formula for sure. I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I was surprised to learn that. By the way, you got the first hit in Mets World Series history. So good job by you there. I was surprised to but, learn but though. You, oh, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Yeah, but I'm saying I, I think about a lot of firsts, but I, I never thought about that. Uh, yeah. Thanks for telling me that. Now I can go brag. I feel like I read it in your book, but uh, either way, I'll, yeah, I'll, okay. we'll, okay. we'll, we'll okay. pretend it's a surprise. Uh, either way. <laughs> Hey, you missed the parade, though, um, which was well, interesting here. to me. I, you weren't high on crack cocaine the night before, were you? Oh, I don't think that was out of there. Man. Okay. I, I was high on something. Look, you read the book, and it says, yeah. Coming Home. I, 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 we were so enthused about winning that we wanted to share everybody back home. Uh -huh. And when when we went home that evening, I you know I didn't even think about afraid, uh, think about celebrating in New York. We thought about celebrating here in Alabama, Alabama, and, and, right? And coming home, and we jumped in the car and drove home. And I didn't realize until we had gotten home that parade was going to be the next day, and we should have been there. Yeah, but uh, you know, um, I, I'm not sorry for me. I'm sorry for uh, my family, my daughter, Anja, and my wife, Angela, 
uh, didn't get a chance to participate uh, in, in, in a parade of that magnitude. They would have liked that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they would have. Well, but, they might have, but you know what? A parade is just people uh, dumping garbage on you from uh, five uh, stories up, right? And what well, driving we, slowly in the we, streets. Yeah, yeah, we like that kind of garbage. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the ticker tape uh, yeah. is good. All right, listen, I want to take a quick break and then I have a, a, a few more questions to add. Cleon Jones is here and uh, he's been great. We'll be right back. All right, Cleon, we are back. I wanted to ask, you know, I, I thought about this. I was like, why did it take him 55 years to write this book? And then um, I, and the more I read about it, the more I understood you. You, uh, you hated talking about yourself, which I think is uh, a good explanation as to why this did take so long. Um, you really, you, you go into detail about how you would steer the conversation the other way when someone would mention you and your accolades. So yes, when it comes down to sit down and write a book about yourself, it was probably tough. But one of the things you said was one of the people, one of the only people that made you feel comfortable in an interview setting was Ralph Kiner. Now he was the Mets announcer for many, many mm -hmm. years, obviously a great uh, slugger in his own right with the Cubs right. and pirates in the forties mm -hmm. and fifties. Uh, but you, that's where you would open up. He was basically the Johnny Carson of sports there. You would mm -hmm. go on Kiner's corner after the Mets game. Was it just at Shea when he would have it? I think probably. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Just a okay. Shea, right. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> Ralph Kiner was the guy you would go to, huh? Uh, Ralph uh, was a good baseball man, and uh, he's a great individual. I, I'm not slighting uh, Bob Murphy or Lindsey Nelson. They, uh -huh. they were great. They were great. But it was, it was a kind of show. And, and, and when you had a good night, you end up on, on the kind of show. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, uh, after winning a ball game, uh, you would go on the show and, and have to talk about yourself. I hated that. You know, uh -huh. uh, uh, what was this pitch and how did you hit it and this, that, and the other. I, I always like talking about my teammates and, and what they contribute. Uh, right. And, and my wife, and people used to call the house and say, you read the paper today. And uh, I say, why? Uh, well, it's about you. I said, well, I know what I'm doing. I need to read about it. That, that's huh. the way I felt about it and, and continue to feel about it throughout my career. And I, I'm still that way. I, I don't, I don't read about me because I know what I'm doing. I, I just hope that what I'm doing is productive, and 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 it it helps someone other than myself be a better person uh, to prosper. That's an amazing outlook, and I think one that's not shared with uh, most other players. I feel like there's a, a certain arrogance to baseball. I mean, you know better than me, but baseball players in general, for better or worse, the arrogance seems to work for them. Um, but yeah, I haven't, there are not too many people like you. That's a very uh, healthy perspective, I would say, uh, you have there. Well, um, well we, yeah. yeah, we, we learn and we, 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 uh, we learn from one another. And then, mm -hmm. uh, again, I couldn't have had, I couldn't have had better teammates. Uh, I, every one of my teammates, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we might have started out rough at some point in time, but we end up as, as brothers. Uh, yeah. Ed Cranepool, uh, Boulder, uh, Gaspar, Grody, Boswell, Garrett. We we all talk uh, on a daily basis mm. because we 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 were teammates, but we we were more than that, and, and it trans translated to longevity. Uh, in life, that we could make a difference for one yeah. another. When I had my, my golf tournament or something like that, I didn't have to beg anybody to send a load. I said, I'm coming to the golf tournament. These mm -hmm. guys say, I'll be there. And they've been there for me uh, all of these years. It's been about 50 plus years now. And the board and I talk probably twice a week. And uh, I just had a birthday. A few days ago, and uh, he was uh, he was here for my birthday. Oh, yeah, we celebrate nice. that. So yeah, uh, uh, I'm a proud man about being a New York Met, and 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 put it tribute to my life and mm -hmm. to my hometown. Suddenly, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, some work went in somewhere uh, from me and my family uh, to have this longevity, and we we hope it continues. Good for you.
what a healthy outlook and it's great and uh and you're you're loved for it I, i'm just curious uh, now this is like a real left turn where did you live when you played for the mets where did you live in I, queens I, I, I lived uh, in queens. you did live, live in, queens. in uh uh jamaica queens area okay uh yeah uh, would, you, would you take the train or that that's probably like a 14 minute drive or something no no well no we we, we drove uh, you did drive uh, yeah uh we drove to, to, to the park uh Oftentimes, my, my wife would drive me and then go back home uh, with the babies and, and come back to the game a little bit later. And, and uh, of course, it was a short drive. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we, 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 we loved uh, where we were and the people around us. And we made a lot of good friends. At, yeah. Uh, Aston. Um, I, I am uh, amazed by, uh, you know, a lot. I've read a lot of baseball books and I, I don't know if you have a great statistician right by you. I, I don't think so. I mean, you might, but I think the way it's written, you can't help to but tell that you have an amazing recall for just like, I, I don't know, what like a, a game, uh, what seemed to be a meaningless game in August on a Tuesday against the Expos. And you'll know, <laughs> like if you were throwing a change up on yeah. your fourth at bat, like how do you keep it all up there? Uh, and I, I guess the other question is how much aid did the uh, reference guides give you? Well, the, the thing about uh, uh, sports, uh, you have to have a big recall. Mm -hmm. You have to remember who got you out last and how they got you out. Uh, you have to remember uh, who's at bat, where you played them the last time and where you hit the ball the last time. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to remember who's on the mound and whether uh, you should say the guy to the left or to the right because if Steve on the line, you 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 know what you have to do. And and Ryan overpowers people, you know what you have to do. So right. baseball is it, it, a uh, it's total recall, remembering uh, 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 every pitch. I know, but 60 years yeah. later, my God, I mean, that's, that's quite well, a defeat. 60 yeah. years later, uh, well, when I get to be a hunter, uh, a lot of these things might, <laughs> <laughs> it might disappear. This is why I'm, I had to get I'm, only, I'm only 80. <laughs> you had so to write I, it all I, down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it comes back, man. And, but I'm reminded of all these things because of guys like you. You know, yeah. uh, I, I'm asked these, these kind of questions all the time. So then uh, even my wife, we sit, sit down at dinner sometimes and, and yeah. she asked me, do you remember this particular thing and, and this and the other? And, and uh, you know, sometimes I had to think about it, but it comes back. And and uh, being, being a New York Met, which is super in, 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 in every way, going mm -hmm. back to uh, Donnie Murphy, uh, uh, Miss Patient, uh, yeah. and Donald Grant, uh, they made it easy for me. And, and uh, they, they were... Uh, one of the owners uh, that they, they made it right. Something that I could remember and cherish because I enjoyed it so much. Well, you were around for those lean years. You talk about uh, Joan Payson and those early. I think you joined the team in '63. Am I right about that? So they, I, I, they I first came up in '63, right? And so they came Polo in Brown. existence, right? So, right. Shea Stadium wasn't around till '64 or '65. Yeah. Six. 64. So the team starts in 62. They famously lose 120 games. You go 40 and 120, and they're, and they're the laughing stock of New right. York. And this is sad right. because you have a lot of Brooklyn Dodger fans become right. Met fans. The team flies, goes to L.A. They're gone. They're gone right. forever. But it only took seven years for you guys to get back on top. An expansion team turning it all around in seven years is pretty spectacular. Yeah, seven years. Seven years to perfection. Mm -hmm. When you call that perfect, I would. I definitely would. <laughs> Knocking off the Orioles like you did, and that yeah. they were a great home well, team. You, you yeah, beat well, them at home. the yeah. Orioles uh, was on everybody's mind and thoughts and and, and, and tongue saying that they were the best team since the 1927 Yankees. Right. And and uh, of course uh, they they were a great team, but uh, they say great pitching stops great hitting. So I, I'm not opponent of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Great pitching uh, doesn't stop great hitting. Great hitters going to get their hits, but they stop everybody else. Right. So uh, Frank Robinson might have had uh, a decent World Series, but uh, we pretty much shut down everybody else.
Yeah. Now I know, uh, boy, uh, there was a, a, a terrible year in there where uh, like within 12 months, you lost Jackie Robinson, Roberto Clemente, and the manager of the Mets, Gil Hodges. This was right. going into the 72 season. Uh, there was right. like a, a strike, a two week mm-hmm. strike. He was golfing and mm-hmm. then, uh, had a heart attack right. and died. And I know you, uh, he was, he was beloved by the, all the whole team right. and the city and, and, but especially you, uh, right. right? Right, you you know uh, you, you name uh, those are special people that you just saw. Jack Robinson was my first hero, mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, when when I talk about Jackie, uh, bring back all kind of fun memories. Makes me think about my grandmother, my great grandmother sitting around the radio, watching Jack Robinson. Yeah, I said watching Jack Robinson. We 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 thought we could see <laughs> every swing. We would holler, look out, Jackie, they're throwing at, they're throwing yeah. at you. And we, we just love uh, baseball. And I got that from my grandparents. And, and I got a chance to meet uh, Jackie and sit down and talk with him in the dugout at Shea Stadium. And I, I shared all that with him uh, about my, my grandparents. And, uh-huh. and uh, he was such a delight uh, to be around. He was so articulate. And he... He, he, he wasn't, he's a strong individual, but I don't know how he humbled himself to get through all that he, he got through. Uh, he's a special human being. And, uh, I know I couldn't have done that. Uh, and, and what he went through, uh, he made it possible for all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and every time I felt a little bit down, uh, uh, I always thought about Jackie. And yeah, that would give me a lift because I know what he went through for his race. Yeah, inspiration for all, really. Um, yeah, I, I, and I was looking at it now. I, I wanted to know what do you like about today's game, and what don't you like about today's game? What stands out? I mean, I, I, obviously, we talked about pitchers, and you you went up against the greats, and I, I, I can only imagine. Now. I don't have the number offhand, but Kuzman, Seaver, you talked about. Uh, uh, Bob Gibson and Sandy Koufax, their complete games stats are through the roof compared to today's yeah. game. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, everyone's well, getting pilled. Like everything else. Yep. It, it, it's a different game. And, uh-huh. and, and not just baseball, basketball, football. Sure. It, it, it's all different. Basketball is all uh, three points. Uh, uh, not much defense. Uh-huh. Um, it, 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 it's me carrying the ball. You don't have to work on top of the ball anymore. Uh, uh-huh. Football is different in in in, in many ways, uh, but it uh, but it's enjoyable. Sports, uh, uh, I don't know what we would do without sports. But all the the frustration that goes on within our society, uh, uh, you know, uh, sports is our kind of uh, get off the train or get on the train, uh, however you you you're situated, uh, to give you some life, give you some hope. Right. Uh, uh, to get you in, in the right frame of mind to get ready for the next day. I don't know what we would do with our sports. So I, I don't I don't try to figure out uh, why everybody goes to the plate is trying to hit a home run or strike out. Mm-hmm. I, get, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't get that. Maybe they're not trying to do that. Maybe that's just the way the game is today. Yeah. But uh, it, it's still a great game. Uh, I still like watching it. Uh, and I still like to see uh, the fundamentals in play. Uh, you, you don't see much bunting now. You don't see much hit and run. You don't see uh, fans go to the park now. Uh, I guess to see home run. But a lot of fans go to see baseball. Yeah. Where it should be played. And that's bunting. That's hit and run. That's stealing bases. Uh, that's taking the extra base. That, that's doing all the things that uh, encompass uh, this great game. You know, you're st- and you talked about it. You're still very busy in retirement. You discuss it in the book and what a rich uh, baseball town Mobile, Alabama is and all the work you're doing there to restore and preserve your hometown, Africa town. Ha- tell us about it and why it's been so important to you personally. Well, Africa town uh, uh, is my community. Uh, Plateau Africa town is where I grew up. Uh, and you wouldn't be talking about the play on Jones that I grew uh, been in a place else. That, that's my opinion. I came up with a lot of great athletes, uh, a lot of great baseball players. 
uh, players. I right now we're putting together a Hall of Fame venue uh, that we have five Hall of Famers from from this area: uh, Hank Aaron, Satchel Paige, Willie McCovey, Billy Williams, and Isaac Smith. Wow! We have so many other great players, borderline uh, 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 Jake Peavy. I, I can name 30 or 40 of them that uh, you would recognize right, right away. Mm-hmm. But uh, so we were putting together that venture, uh, Field of Dream. Uh, and and I, I'm dealing with the uh, history of my, my, my community, the story of the Clotilda, uh, which was the last slave ship uh, to import uh, cargo in for the purpose of, of slavery. Uh, I live in that community. Those, uh, uh, well, I don't call them slaves. Well, where these people were brought here for the purpose of slaves, but mm-hmm. they settled and, and, and lived. That, that's where my, my parents grew up, my grandmother, my great grandmother, and her mother grew up in, in, in the same area. So that history is important to me. And this community is worth preserving and take people like me. Uh, to uh, get the word out and 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 make sure that everybody knows this history because yeah. it's, it's it's important. Uh, but not only that, uh, it, it's been hidden for so many years that it, it's time the world uh, understand what happened. Uh, I'm not blaming anybody for anything. Uh, slavery uh, at one point was legal. We all recognize that. I can't blame present-day people for what happened back then because they weren't back then. I don't care if your name was uh, mayor uh, or something to the effect that you ended up with slavery. That's who that was. But what I want is that people understand that this is now and we all must live together and understand the history so we can understand one another. We can't, uh, we, we just can't go around every day blaming uh, uh, the male family for what happened in 1860, mm-hmm. 1859. Uh, let's get past that and build a strong community, a strong relationship uh, to make a better America. Well, you're doing great things, and uh, but it sounds like you know, the Baseball Hall of Fame, but from the first things you were saying, should move from Cooperstown to Mobile, Alabama, or Africatown, or somewhere around yeah. there. I mean, my yeah. God, what yeah. a hotbed for <laughs> talent. Well, they might have better representation, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no and, a better, kidding. and a better location. But <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, hey, before you go, I want to get your prediction. What do you think of this year's Mets team? How far can they go? Well, I, I think I think they they got the nucleus of. Uh, a, a, a great team. Uh, if they can stay healthy, they got pitching, they got toughness, they, they can do it all. They, they just have to stay healthy and, and hope that uh, their starters uh, can stay in the lineup. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I predict that uh, they've been in playoffs and that they have what it takes uh, to walk all over those Yankees. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Stay healthy. Uh, don't, don't blow the games yourself. What did Gil Hodges say? Don't lose to yourself. Don't don't beat yourself. Don't beat yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Don't beat yourself. yourself. Stay Uh, healthy. And I think we should load up on shoe polish just in case it gets close. And, uh, I keep, I I keep, uh, especially, <laughs> uh, if you're looking for something to read this summer, you're a baseball fan. It's out August 2nd. Go out, get it. Coming home by Amazing Life with the New York Mets. Cleon Jones, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you All for right. having me. Thanks again. Have a great right. day. Take care. You too, Cleon.